Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope all of you are having an awesome weekend. We're looking at an IELTS reading passage in this class. Um, the topic or the title of this passage will be the city of a thousand windows. Hmm, what could that be about? Uh, this lesson, these materials are presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there. For the general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. These are the websites that power these live classes. If you're in these live classes regularly and you want to maximize your learning efficiency, definitely, definitely join these classes. Welcome, Sidian uh, Stan members. This is a subscribers chat class. You need to subscribe to the channel to join the chat. You will see Carolina in the chat in blue. She is our chat moderator. She will help you uh, when you need it. You can ask her questions as well as myself. Students, our websites uh, that we're using today and we will use for interacting with students in a few moments. This is aehelp.com here with the blue background. Uh, to join the premium version of the course, all you need to do is click this big red button here. It's just above my head. It's a one-time payment. You get lifetime access. It doesn't cost a lot. We don't believe in subscription models. We want you to just use it until you need it and you get to keep it forever. Uh, we're an IDP affiliate. We're a British Council partner. We're an IELTS test registration center. I'm a certified British Council agent. We had the first IELTS video on YouTube and we are world leaders when it comes to the IELTS exam. The website with the green background is for general IELTS. It's gieltshelp.com. Same idea, you click that big red button and you are golden. You're good to go. Uh, you do have this uh, special discount right now uh, for the Lunar New Year. Uh, that discount is Dragon24 because it is the year of the dragon for all those dragons out there. Um, you apply that code, you get a 24% discount. Uh, check the price, it's different in different countries. It's actually likely cheaper in many of your countries because I am in Canada. All right, uh, students, um, so, uh, the premium member, so when you are a premium member of the website, you get access to our premium member Zoom classes every Sunday and Wednesday. Uh, premium members, I know there are lots of you out there, I just sent you the links, the Zoom links for your uh, Sunday class on the 18th and your Wednesday class on the 21st. Just have to check my calendar there. You should see it in your inbox at some point. If you don't see it, check your spam and trash folders. Make sure you're getting these. By the way, everybody, you can uh, access the websites and buy the premium access through YouTube here, through the store, through Shopify. I'm going to put the link in there for you as well. That makes it quite easy for everybody. There you go. All right, Noral Safa, if you're a premium uh, student, then you will get the link automatically. We have a special list for those people. Welcome, Angel. Hi, Anna. Get to see so many students joining in. Uh, the apps are Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help in your app stores. And uh, for Instagram, we've got some uh, funny reels for you and vocabulary there. IELTS underscore A Help and G IELTS Help. Check those out. Uh, if you have questions and you want to email me, adrian at aehelp.com or admin at aehelp.com. We are growing and expanding. Uh, we would love to get your CV uh, if you want to be a video editor in our company. Again, you can just send me an email with your CV and say, I'm interested in video editing. I like it. I do it. Um, and then we can discuss that as well. Uh, okay, so uh, everybody, subscribers, uh, reading right now. Uh, tomorrow, speaking, part two, part three, Sunday, premium website students, Zoom class. Be on time, please. Okay, uh, new video, yes, all the time, every week, new videos for you. We want you to improve. 
Rahul says, yes, I got the premium class link. Awesome, Rahul, that's great. Thank you for confirming. I know the email's working. <laughs> I might not be, um, but the email's working. Okay, good. All right, let's get into reading. So uh, reading we will. Um, tip number one, read the title. Always read the title and stop for a minute. I literally mean a minute and think about it. What could this be about? Let's do that. Here we go. Uh, read with me, everybody. This is reading. Make sure to read together. Read aloud. Uh, here we go. The title, The City of a Thousand Windows. Okay, you've read this title. What do you think it is? So before we go on here, what do you think it is? What is the author going to write about here? <laughs> the City of a Thousand Windows, right? Um, so what could this mean? Okay, um, answer it. So start to get some ideas in your head. What could that mean? So obviously it means there's a city, be a city that has more windows uh, than usual. This is likely a unique uh, place. It probably has an interesting uh, history and culture. Right? Yeah, Polly uh, Yaneva says probably some interesting infrastructure. I agree with you. Probably some interesting buildings, right? Likely some interesting buildings. I agree. So when you get to your IELTS reading section after the listening, of course, um, and you see those titles, uh, one really good <clears throat> step or uh, first step is just to look at all of the titles of every passage and just kind of think about them and pick one that you think might be the easiest for you to pay attention to. Again, on the website, everybody, uh, when you're in your My Student account, um, and I really do want to bring your attention to the uh, full online academic course, okay? There's a lot of other tools in here, like computer-based practice exams and so on. Uh, go to the reading section lessons and click through these because you're going to see a lot of the uh, tips uh, that I'm telling you in these classes. Uh, in the course like you're going to see for example just a list of all of the questions that you should read before the passage like you should read matching information questions category table completion questions summary completion filling in the blanks finding paragraph headings and diagram label completion questions and then there's certain questions that you should read only after the passage, like matching sentence endings, true, false, not given, matching features, yes, no, not given, multiple choice. It's a big mistake. A lot of students read these before the passage and then it gets really confusing because they have all this extra and false information swimming around in their heads. And then they get to the questions and they're like, did I read that in the passage? Did I read that in the questions? Did I even read that? Um, and it's really confusing. If I read true, false, not given pass, uh, true, false, not given questions before the passage, they confuse me. Then when I get to them, I'm kind of like, hmm, did I read that before or after? Was that the question? So you shouldn't read them. And and these are in your uh, my uh, student account in your uh, full online interactive course okay and you combine that course you combine these lessons with all these videos that you have here for the reading section as well so you've got your reading section lessons here and you combine it with these live classes and you're going to improve really quickly on your IELTS exam okay so definitely definitely 
uh, check that out. We'll come back to the website and actually do reading together here uh, very soon. Okay, so lots and lots of tools there for you. All right, so like I said, let's look at the questions. Okay, here we have a title of summary topic. Okay, so this is like a summary completion type question. This is good to read before the passage because all of this information is somewhere in the passage. Okay. Imtiaj says, I only read the title of the passage and then directly go to the first question. Well, that's what we're doing right now, but we're going to read the passage as well. Uh, for high band scores, you need to read the passage, okay? Um, here we go, everybody. Let's read this, okay? Title of summary topic, beginnings. The mythical origin of Barat involves a battle between two something concerning the affections of a certain woman named Tamor and Shparag. They live on today in the form of something surrounded uh, surrounding <clears throat> the city of Barat. Ah, now we know we're talking about the city of Barat here. Okay. Uh, violence strikes. Barat is thought to be about 2,500 years old. Soon after this time, when it was a Macedonian fortress, the something destroyed the city and killed all males over the age of 15. Later, Barat was given the name because of its importance in culture and beauty in the Byzantine Empire. Guarding Barat. The fortress on top of Osum River's north bank is known as the something of Barat. It is over 1,500 years old and was repaired approximately 800 years ago. It once held many religious institutions, including a something and 20 Christian houses of worship. Okay. Uh, questions 33 to 39. Do the following statements agree with the claims of the writer? I'm reading passage 3. I can see it's a yes, no, not given question. Remember, don't read these. No, read. Okay. Don't read. No. No. Lots of possibly false and extraneous or extra information that is not in the passage. A multiple choice. If you must, read just the question. Don't read the choices because, again, three of these are wrong and we have no idea what's going on here. <clears throat> Let's do it. Uh, which of the following phrases best describes the main aim of reading passage three? Well, if you're skimming and scanning only, that's going to be really hard. Okay, you can't skim and scan for the main aim of the reading passage, even though you think you might be able to, and you think, oh, I'll just read the introduction. Uh, it's quite possibly not going to happen for you. So you have to read the passage, everybody. That's what we need to do. We need to read, and we're going to read, and we're going to read together, okay? So I'm going to read the passage, read it with me, and then you're going to read the passage and we're going to answer the questions together. Okay, everybody good? All right, Babur, I'm feeling great. Yash, if you're finding difficulties in writing, check out those writing classes. Jot, good luck on your listening, reading, writing test tomorrow. Okay, here we go, everybody. Ready to read? Thumbs up, paying attention. Yes, here we go. Visualize, try to imagine, you're a tourist, you're there, you're checking out this place. Okay, Fuang says, let's do it. Here we go. The City of a Thousand Windows. According to an Albanian legend, Barat, the city of a thousand windows as it is affectionately known, was brought into being by a fight among the gods over the love of a woman. Two ancient giants, represented by the nearby mountains Tamor and Shparag, killed each other in the battle for the woman's heart. Emotionally distraught over the deaths, the woman cried unendingly. She cried so much that her tears of sorrow created the Osum River, which bisects Barat, and she drowned in this river of her own tears. 
Barad is an ancient city, and it is believed to be approximately 2,500 years old. Though the historical record is unclear, historians think the original inhabitants of the area were the ancient Greek tribe known as the Dasaretae uh, lived. Later, the settlement became a Macedonian fortress in what was then southern Illyria. One of the most gruesome events in the town's history occurred in 200 BC when it was attacked by the Roman army led by Lucius Apustius. His army destroyed the city's defenses and killed every male citizen over the age of 15 in what must have been a terrible massacre. During the Byzantine period, following the fall of the western half of the Roman Empire, Barat was known as Polcheripolis, a name which was derived from Polcheria, the sister of Roman Emperor Theodosius II. This name was not given casually. Polcheria was highly respected throughout the empire and was considered a co-regent alongside her brother, the emperor. Barat was given this name because it was an important center of culture, wealth, and beauty in the empire. The heart of Barat for centuries has been the castle atop a rocky hill on the north bank of the Osum River. The citadel of Barat, as it is sometimes known, was began before the Roman invasion, rebuilt by Theodosius II in the 5th century CE, and rebuilt again in the 13th century by the local Byzantine government. At its peak in the 1200s, the fortress housed thousands of citizens, 20 churches, the city was overwhelmingly Christian, one mosque, and other shops and services. To this day, hundreds of Albanians live within the castle walls. Though most of the churches have been destroyed, and the mosque exists only in minor ruins, much of the housing remains intact from the period. The early modern period of Barat, 16th to 18th centuries, was dominated by the Ottoman Empire. Construction during this time reflected both the Ottoman influence and the influence of Islam. By 1670, the city was home to a Muslim majority, less than 100 years after being almost entirely Christian. The construction of this time period largely remains to the present day and is the origin of Barat's nickname, the City of a Thousand Windows. As the Ottoman aesthetic favored relatively large and plentiful windows. This design, along with the city's layout along the hillside embankment of the Osum River, which allows visitors to see much of the city's housing at one time, gave the impression that Barat was a city dominated by windows. To this day, visitors to the city quickly understand the city's nickname, as the windows continue to dominate the cityscape. The end of the Ottoman Empire in the early 20th century coincided with the rise of Albanian nationalism and the creation of the modern Albanian state in 1913. Albania endured Nazi occupation in the 20th century, as well as the iron-fisted rule of communist dictator Enver Hoxha from 1944 to 1985. Hoxha's rule was commemorated on the side of nearby Mount Shparag, one of the mythical giants from Barat's origin legend mentioned above, in 1968 with the colossal painting of his name, 
visible for miles. The letters, each 100 meters high and 60 meters wide, dominated the skyline above Barat for decades. If you visit Barat today, however, the mountainside letters look slightly different. In 2012, as part of a documentary film project, a 58-year-old farmer and his nephew effectively switched the first two letters by power washing and repainting, resulting in the word never adorning the mountainside. Never again would the proud Albanian people fall into the grips of dictatorship, and never again would the people of Barat venerate their past oppressor. Barat, an ancient city which has seen rulers and regimes come and go, has been the one constant. From the Illyrians, Romans, and Byzantines to the Ottomans, Nazis, and Communists, Barat has been through a lot, and still, the city of a thousand windows persists unbroken. All right, Imtiaj says so many hard words. Imtiaj, yeah, IELTS. It's high school, grade 12, college level reading. Absolutely. It's the type of literature that you see as an adult in everyday life. That's what IELTS presents, right? IELTS presents adult literature because people are usually 16 and over who are taking the IELTS. So it makes sense. They're not going to present you with kids' literature, right? And this is an article that you could read in a travel magazine, for example, right? So it's natural English and the IELTS will test you on your ability to understand and use natural English. Again, keep in mind, I said this in the last class, everybody, IELTS is not an English as a second language exam, is it? It is an English proficiency test. Okay. Polyaneva says it's really close to my country and history. Absolutely. Polly, absolutely. All right, now we are going to answer these questions together and then I will show you how. And if you didn't understand every single word, that is okay. That is okay. You do not need to understand every single word. Uh, students, keep this in mind. Here's a little note for you. Note. You do not need to understand every word and idea in IELTS uh, reading to get a band seven. Just 60 to 70% is enough. As long as you get the main ideas. Um, what were some of the main ideas in this passage, everybody, from this reading? Okay. So give me what you, give me a summary. Give me your own summary. Uh, your summary. This is your uh, summary of a, the city of a thousand windows. Um, just uh, bullet points. So bullet points. Um, Barat is in Albania. Barat is 2,500 years old with rich and uh, turbulent history. Uh, many empires invaded Barat, including the Germans, Romans, Soviets. Okay. What else? Yeah, Polly says the legend, the legend of uh, Barat comes uh, from some gods and giants and a woman who cried a lot. <laughs> she cried an entire river, right? She cried a lot. 
Alexander says, not the Soviets. That's not given. Alexander, you're right. Uh, it became communist, but I, I agree. See, that, that was my brain that was... Um, putting that in there so many empires invaded Barad including the Germans Romans not the Soviets you're right we have to be careful Alexander I'll give that one to you it doesn't say it was invaded by the Soviets it says it was communist right so we want to take that out okay it said something else like the Ilrians Byzantine which are the Romans I guess in some sense but you're right yeah so uh, and it's a good point, everybody. Don't mix your own ideas in there. See, because it was communist after the Nazis. And, of course, a lot of communism came with the rise of Soviet Union. It doesn't mean that Soviet Union actually invaded. So you should never mix your own ideas. And that was a bad idea by me, Alexander, right? Alexander says it was the local communists. <laughs> yes, that's right. Okay. Oh, the Ottomans. Yes. Polly says, let's not forget about the Ottomans modern day turkey more or less right the ottoman empire mm -hmm. the greeks alexander says okay so just what you remember what else do we remember anything else carolina says anahita has a question anahita says why in the reading passage every paragraph main points are not mentioned in their thesis or even if they are they are combined why in the reading passage every paragraph's main points are not mentioned in their thesis or they are combined? Um, I see, Anahita, what you're asking. Um, because uh, longer essays, so essays that have five uh, body paragraphs, four or five body paragraphs, um, the thesis points might not each separately outline them. There's going to be subtop mm, sorry, subtopics. So when you get into longer literary pieces it becomes more complicated than what you're thinking about task two okay we haven't covered that level of advanced writing and i won't because that's not for ielts that's for your university classes in literature ielts is just preparing you for that so that's why anahita a good question okay all right i also remember that um the uh, mtiage says they have unbreakable faith i don't know about that so because they were christian at some point they were uh, both uh, christian and muslim right so they had a mix kind of switched from one to the other to the both um, all right, so they were mixing mixing some religions there as well. Uh, there was some citadel, a uh, famous, uh, famous uh, building, the castle, the citadel. Hopefully you visualize that, the big castle on top of the mountain. Uh, some big letters too, some big letters on one mountain um, that were significant. Okay. Yeah, Asha says some colossal painting. Okay, so as long as you kind of got all of these ideas for the most part, you're pretty good. You're doing a good job. All right, so um, for practice purpose, let's read it again. Uh, you will read it this time. I will choose different volunteers and then we'll answer the questions. Sounds good, everybody? Belgis, have a good night. Sounds like uh, it's late where you are and you're out of gas, so. Absolutely, take a rest. Um, no, I mean, you wouldn't have, um, so you could have a reading passage like this for sure in the IELTS, absolutely. Um, you're not going to have like an essay question though, okay. Uh, Wyatt, if we can see that the essay supports or backs up the statement, then it will be true. We'll get to those. We'll get to those. 
Okay, so here everybody, let's do some volunteering and reading. So we're gonna go to our website, aehelp.com. That's where a lot of the magic happens. I know it's great to save as much money as possible, but there's time to save, there's time to spend. Uh, when I have a $300 exam, I probably will invest $30, $40. Uh, to maximize my learning and time. You can do that by clicking the red button there at aehelp.com. You can get it through Shopify. Uh, you go to your My Student account. Uh, in your My Student account, one of the tools you have is the Student Partner Speaking. Now you can use this for free. You do not have to pay for this function. You can use that one for free. A lot of the other great functions though, like getting all our practice exams and videos, etc that's where you need to pay also to join the premium classes on the on Sunday and Wednesday I just sent those links for everybody Carolina thanks for backing that up um, so let's click on that and start uh, our interaction so we have Rahul Manikanta Anna you're going to see me in here everyone as well uh, you will see me in here as master and uh, once you see me, once you find me, click on that blue envelope that's right beside my handle and then we can jump in and um, and we can do a bit of reading and uh, really get into this, okay? So let's start with our premium student, Anna. Um, Anna, are you ready? All right, here we go, everyone. Let's do it. So we're going to read one more time, visualize, pay attention to those points that we uh, covered. Here we go. Oh, hello, hi there. Hi, Anna. How are you? I'm doing great. Like, like I, uh, I only finished my dinner with slice of cake. I'm doing fantastic today. Like, <laughs> it's always a good day when you have a slice of cake at the end of dinner. I, that's what I find. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> All right, Anna. Let's do a bit of reading. Um, you should see it up on the screen now, and just start with the title and uh, body paragraph one and two. The city offers thousand windows. According to an Albanian legend, Beret, Beret is the city of a thousand windows as it affect, affectionately known uh, was brought into being by a fight among the gods over the love of a woman. Two ancient giants represented by the nearby mountains to more and uh, she is Spirag killed each other in the battle for the woman's heart. Emotionally, distra emotionally distraught over the death, the woman cried un unendingly. She, she cried so much that her tears of sorrow created the awesome river which be be bisects Beret and she drowned in the river of her own tears. That's great. Okay, Anna, stop there for just one second. Um, can you pick one or two words that you feel are new and you're not sure what they mean? Uh, yes, affectionate, affectionately. This is the first in the topic sentence. Affectionately. Yes. Affection is to show caring and love towards another person. So affection is to show feeling, affection, uh, the expression of feeling. And affectionately means with feeling. This feeling like passion, yes, passion. Mm -hmm. to, Passionately to and affectionately are very similar. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and pick one more word. Uh, distraught. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, distraught means like um, really kind of sad and depressed and troubled. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, and this distraught, it's like a feeling of momentally or it could be a long feeling, distraught. How, how much time it could be like happens to, to, to a person. It's emotionally, so emotionally distraught. It, may, it, it could be kind of physically as well, but it's more mentally. 
It's, it's, mm -hmm. you're, it's a person's mentally distraught. It means they're confused. They're kind of losing their mind almost. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, Anna, keep reading. Barat is an ancient city. Y yeah. All right. Uh, Bar Barat is an ancient city and is believed to approximately two, two, uh, two and a half uh, thousand years ago. So the historical record is so the historical record is unclear. Historians think the original inhabitants of the area were the ancient Greek tribe known as Deserate. Deser Later, the settlement because of Macedonians for 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 in what was it was in what was the then southern i i i southern first Illyria Illyria one of the most gr 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 gruesome events in the town town's history occurred in 200 BC when it was attacked by the Roman army led by Lucius Apuntius. His army destroyed the city defenses and killed every male citizen over the age of 15 in what must have been a terrible ma mass massacre. 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 Massacre is when many, many people are killed or many, many animals massacre. are killed. Yeah. It's a massacre. All right, uh, lots of tricky names, right? Like the uh, Deseratea, the uh, Macedonian uh, fortress, uh, Illyria. Um, in the actual Isles, when you see these names, uh, don't try to figure them out, just go through them. Um, this is like, definitely, yeah. yeah, exactly, pass through them. This is definitely one of those um, paragraphs where power reading would be a good idea to practice. Do, have you been practicing power reading that I talked about in our premium class? Yes, I, I practiced yesterday for 15 minutes. Good. How did you feel about that? Like, it's an unusual feeling, but I think uh, with practice I, I will do better. <laughs> okay, good. All right. That's a positive attitude. I like it. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so um, good reading, Anna. Um, I would mm -hmm. definitely, you know, when you read a paragraph like that, go through that step of reading some of those difficult words twice out loud and then read the paragraph one more time smoothly. So you can just take parts of that power reading that we covered in that class on uh, Wednesday and apply that to some of these par paragraphs to just be a little bit smoother. These would be difficult words for anybody, for um, an English speaker as well. These are unfamiliar, so you have to be able to kind of just practice reading them. Okay, mm -hmm. Anna, that was really good. Thank you for being my first volunteer. Thank you so much for giving me a chance and I was honored to open this reading class. And yes, thank you very much. You're very, Have a good very day. Bye, Anna. All right, that was Anna. That was really good. Let's give Anna a thumbs up. That was really nice. Um, so she put a lot of effort into it, and that's how you should practice. Okay, Gazi, how could I not? All those awesome super chat donations. Yes, you can. Of course. Are you ready? I'm looking for our regular students, premium students, new students. So uh, just uh, keep hanging in there, Dari, Yin, Alexander. I see you there, closer or lower down on the list. Uh, don't panic. Uh, Ghazi, if you're there, um, give me a signal, give me a sign. Ring, ring, ring. Ghazi, no answer. What's going on? Uh, Ghazi, I don't hear you. Um, let me see what's going on there. We usually have a good connection and you are here in Canada, so there should be no reason for us not to be able to connect. Uh, let me just refresh my page and then see if I can try you one more time here.
Hello, Adrian. There you are, Gazi. How are you? I'm fine. How about you? <laughs> I'm doing pretty, pretty good. Thanks. Uh, yeah, my energy levels are great today. Thanks for asking. All right, okay. Gazi. Um, thanks for that super chat donation. That was really cool. That's, that was your tenth one. YouTube even said it. it's like. Ooh. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, that just assembled, and you deserve uh, more—a million dollars. Oh, for thank this you. <laughs> thank yeah. you. <laughs> Maybe one day. One day. All right, yeah. um, Gazi. Let's do this reading. So, uh, when you are ready. Yeah. Um, go ahead and read from uh, during the Byzantine period. Okay. Uh, during the Byzantine period, uh, following the fall of the Western half of the Roman Empire, uh, Berat was known as a bowl chair polis, uh, a name which was uh, derived from uh, Bulgaria. Uh, the sister of Roman Empire, uh, Theodosius uh, II, this name was not given uh, cordially. Uh, Pulcheria was highly respected throughout of, uh, throughout, throughout of Empire and was considered a co-regent uh, alongside her brother, the Emperor. Herat was given this name because it was an important center of uh, culture, uh, wealthy and beauty uh, in the empire. Very nice. All right. Um, great reading. Your reading's improving a lot, Ghazi. Very good. Um, Thank you. Uh, I can tell you're, you're doing a bit of practice for sure. Um, just yeah. be careful to be accurate with the word form so it's not wealthy, it's wealth. And... Um, here it wasn't empire; it was emperor Theodosius, right? The, which is okay. like the the king, yeah. the king of king, the, the emperor. Okay, um, Ghazi, keep reading this next uh, paragraph for us here. The heart of. Okay, uh, the heart of uh, Pirat of uh, centuries has been the castle atop a uh, rocky hill uh, on the north bank uh, of awesome River. The a uh, city uh, of Beirut, and it is something now. It uh, was begun before the Roman invasion, uh, rebuilt by uh, Tiberius II in the 5th century CE, uh, and rebuilt again in the 13th century by the local uh, Byzantine government. At the S peak uh, in the uh, 200, uh, the uh, fortress, the house thousand of uh, citizens, uh, 20 churches, and the city was overwhelmingly uh, Christian. Uh, on Moscow and uh, other shops and surface uh, to the day. Hundreds of Albanians live uh, within the castle walls. Uh, felt most of the churches have been destroyed, and the mosque uh, exists only in the major rooms. Uh, much of the housing remains intact uh, from the period. Nice, nice. Okay, uh, repeat a couple words after me, and this is not just for Ghazi, this is for everybody. Practice your pronunciation, it's a part of the power reading yeah. strategy as well. So just repeat after me, Citadel. A citadel. Citadel of Barat. Citadel of Barat. Twelve hundreds. Twelve hundred. Yeah, twelve hundreds. Twelve hundreds. Yeah. Mosque. Mosque. I say mosque, but yeah, mosque. 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 Yeah. Mosque. Mosque. Yeah. Okay, uh, great. All right, uh, that was really good, guys. That was really good. Your reading's getting much better. Continue to do a bit of aloud reading as soon as you pick up a book or a yeah. magazine and you have the chance. Just remember, okay, a little bit of out loud reading, just five ten minutes of reading aloud does magic for English communication. So really keep doing that, okay, Ghazi? 
Yeah, I find some uh, difficult words here in the historic, uh, historical topics I'm not familiar with. Uh, so, a loud reading. A loud reading. So, yeah, a loud reading. Okay, thank you. Ghazi, yeah. thank you. Have an awesome, uh, f is it family long weekend for you as well in uh, on the East Coast? It's family, family yeah. day long weekend for us. So have a great family day long weekend. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I have uh, a lot of uh, shuffling these days. We have a lot of snow outside. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe take a rest on this family day long weekend and get, I, I, I get the kids. I shuffle uh, three or four <laughs> times every day. <laughs> yes. But just think how strong you'll be, your biceps and your back muscles. Yeah. You'll be uh, just a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> a right. good exercise, yeah. Thank exactly. You. It's free gym, free gym. Yeah. <laughs> bye, bye, Ghazi. Bye. Bye, bye. Bye. All right. Ghazi's on the east coast of uh, Canada, and we're having quite a cold front going through lots of parts of Canada right now. Yeah. All right. Um, Yin, you've been very patient at the lower end of the list here. Are you ready to uh, do a bit of reading with us? And thanks for all the thumbs up, everybody. Ghazi's just a great, great human being all around a father of four and a hard-working individual living on the east coast in newfoundland um all right uh yin if you're there if you're hearing me give me a sign polly says good job man right on polly good to have you in the class ugulthan says good job gazi absolutely yin Yin, I don't hear you. It, hears you. it sounds like you picked up. I'm not sure what part of the world you're in. I'm not sure what you're using, mobile or desktop, or what kind of connection. But I don't hear you, Yin. Um, let me let me try you one more time. I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I did with Ghazi there. I'm just going to refresh my page, see if that maybe helps us out a little bit. You can give it another shot. Let's do this. All right, Yin, hopefully. Yin? I'm so. Oh, there you are. Hi, Yin. How are you? I'm doing great, sir. All right. Yin, it's a little bit of a shaky connection. Um, can you tell me where you are? What part of the world you're in? I'm living in Phnom Penh City in Cambodia, sir. You are in Cambodia. Yeah, we've talked before, right, Yin? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, Yin, let's try a paragraph. If it's really tricky or if we can't hear you, then we'll adjust. But let's let's do it. Let's try a paragraph. Okay, are you ready to read? Excellent. All right, let's try it. Uh, so when you see the early modern period, maybe if you have any other internet um, activity going on, try to minimize it. Um, and then go from the early modern period of Bharat. The early modern period of the era 16th to 18th century was dominated by the Ottoman Empire. Construction during this time reflected both of the Ottoman influence, the influence of Islam. By the 1670s, the city was home to a Muslim majority, less than a hundred years after being almost entirely Christian. The construction of this time period largely remains to the present day, and this origin of Beirut's nickname, the theory of thousands, thousand windows, as the Ottoman ascetics favored relatively large and plentiful windows. This design, along with the city layout along the hillside, embankment of the Arzan River, which allows visitors to see much of the city housing at one time. They would imprison the river city dominated by window to this day. Visitors to the city quickly understand the city's nickname as the window continued to dominate the cityscape. 
That was awesome. That was really good. Yeah, and that was really good reading. That's very fluent. Very nice. Thank nice pronunciation. Too. Yeah, nice pronunciation. Nice fluent reading. <laughs> Speed is great. If you can read that quickly, you should have <laughs> no problem reading all those three passages in the IELTS exam. You know, a lot of people say, oh, there's not enough time in the IELTS to read. Oh, yeah, there's enough time. 20 minutes is lots <laughs> of time. Um, it's the comprehension. It's understanding what you read. That's the tricky part. Um, but that speed is... Great. Um, Yin, what is this paragraph about? It received. What's the main, what's the main idea here? Main idea of the paragraph is. The change in... to. I can find it, sir. It's usually at the top. It says the early modern period of Bharat was dominated by the Ottoman Empire. Right? So it's this time yeah. period of Bharat where it became basically a Muslim culture. And that's where it got its name, the Thousand Windows. That's where it got all this window architecture. Right? That's kind of the, the main goal of this paragraph is that during this time, so from the 1500s till the end of the 1700s, the Ottomans ruled in Bharat and they built all these windows and that's where it gets its name from, right? Yes. Okay, so Yin, <clears throat> when you're reading, that's what you want to focus on is focusing on just grasping that main idea, okay? <clears throat> I agree with that. Yeah, so um, what you want to do when you're practicing your reading for the IELTS is read the passage once, just nice and natural. Think about all the ideas and then read each paragraph again. And after each paragraph, stop and ask yourself, you know, what's the main idea here? If you don't get it, read it again, okay? Yes, sir. All right. I will read it again. Okay. Uh, usually for the body paragraphs, the main ideas are in the first couple of sentences, usually, but not always. In the introduction and conclusion, you have to read the whole paragraph to understand the main idea. Okay? Yes. All right, Yin, that was really good. Really nice reading. So keep doing that. Really focus on uh, comprehension. Okay? Yes. All right. Thanks for volunteering, Yin. Come back again. Okay? Goodbye, sir. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye, Yin. All right, Yin from Cambodia. That's awesome. Uh, let's give Yin a thumbs up. Wow, that was yeah, that was really impressive. Good reading. Okay, um, let's uh, let's check in with Dari Alexander Saidi's Lum. I see you there, Somesh. I got you on my radar. Don't worry, uh, Dari. Are you ready? I'm pretty sure we've had Yin before. I'm not sure if we've had Dari yet. Dari's even got a little wave emoji going on for us Dari right back at you thanks for all those thumbs up in the chat everybody you're all just such great peers hi Dari hi hi sir how are you I'm doing great I'm doing great how Good. are you I'm doing good. Dari, is this your first time? Yeah. All right. No need to be nervous, Dari. Everybody has their first time here chatting on the channel. So we all have that same. Even I had a first time when I did my very first live uh, class. I don't know. That was a long time ago, but I had my first time. Uh, so it's all good. It's all good. We're all here in the same boat together. Um, Dari, where are you? What part of the world are you in? I'm from Asian part of Russia. Um nearby Lake Baker. Which what's the country? And China. Russia. Oh you you're in Russia. You're in the Asian region of Russia. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. So you're over all, all the way on the east. All right. Yes. Yeah, it's it's quite an uh, I don't want to say unfamiliar, but it's not as known that region of Russia to the world often. I I, I get that, yeah. Um beautiful part of the world, I've heard though. Is that true? It's quite uh, quite pretty. Yeah. And cold. <laughs> pretty and cold. Hey, I'm in Canada, so you're talking to the right guy. Um, it gets pretty cold here, too. You just heard Ghazi. He's been shoveling snow all day. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, Dari, uh, why are you taking the IELTS? Uh, I want to study abroad. Mm -hmm. 
Where? Um, of course, I want to USA or Canada, but also maybe China or well, Europe. Okay, all right, I got you. Um, if you've had enough of the cold and you want somewhere a little warmer, I would recommend places like California and Florida in the U.S. for sure, nice and warm there, especially if you're in the south part. North part of Florida, north part of uh, California, it's pretty cold too, but uh, southern parts get nice and warm. Um, or if you choose Canada, then where I live in Victoria or Vancouver, those are the warmer places. Okay, um, Dari, let's do this. So you should see this last paragraph here now. Um, and uh, when you're ready, go ahead and read that for us. The end of the Ottoman Empire in the early 20th century uh, considered with the rise of Albanian nationalism and the creation of the modern Albanian state in 1930. Boy, 13. Albania endured Nazi occupation in the 20th century, as well as the iron fished rule of communist uh, dictator Enver. Hoxha from 1944 to 1985. Hoxha's rules was commemorated on the site of nearby Mount Sprague, one of the mythical giants. Dari, did we lose you? I wonder if Dari's using mobile and you get a phone call, phone calls will supersede any other app that you're using. So that could happen. Let's just check in with Dari, see if we lost her. That can happen. Dari, are you still there? Yeah, I think Dari might have gotten a phone call there. So that's uh, the rare uh, situation that happens there. All right, Alexander, let's get you to finish this. So Alexander, are you ready? And then if Dari comes back, Dari, if you can hear me, come back and um, we'll get you back on uh, to do a couple of questions, okay? Alexander, you're gonna pick up where Dari left off. Alexander, let me know. All right. Alexander, I don't hear you. But that could be okay. I'm going to do what seem to seems to be working in this class where I just refresh the page and then reconnect. So let me just refresh here. And then um, reach out to you again, Alexander. Here, uh, you're going to hear another ring from me. Alexander. I don't hear you. Alexander, let me just hang up. Um, do one more shift refresh here. I'm going to do a, a more like a clear cookie refresh with the shift refresh. And then I'm going to try to call you one more time. Right, right route through some other part of the world. Alexander, I don't hear you either. So I don't know what that could be. Could be uh, something on the web. We don't know. Um, who knows? I'm not sure why. But um, Ed Skeptron, that's awesome. You're welcome. Thank you for that. Uh, anyway, if somebody else uh, would like to, Maya would like to volunteer. Maya, right at the very bottom. Are you ready? Yeah, I mean, the internet is a tricky landscape of firewalls and different types of connections. And some are good, some are bad, some are controlled. We do what we can. Uh, Maya, I'm sure a lot of people these days know that. They're like, yeah. Um, Maya, let's do this. Hello? 
Hi, Maya. I hear you, Maya. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Ah, there's your clear. Very good. There's your pretty clear voice, Maya, your pretty clear voice. It's, uh, I haven't heard it in a while. It's nice to hear you. All right. Um, Maya, are you ready to pick up where Dari left off? Yes, of course I am. Okay. Um, so let's just continue from Hoax's rule was commemorated. Uh-huh. Hoax's rule was commemorated on the side of nearby Mount Shvirak, one of the mythical giants from Berat's origin legend mentioned above. In, in 1968, with a colossal painting of his name, visible for miles, the letters each 100 meters high and 60 meters wide dominated the skyline above Berat for decades. If you visit Berat today, however, the Mount uh, mountain side letters look slightly different. In 2012, as part of the uh, documentary film project, a 58-year-old farmer and his nephew effectively switched the first two letters by power, washing and repainting, resulting in the word, word never. Adorning the mountain side, never again would the proud Albanian people fall into the grips of dictatorship and never again uh, can you scroll down yep and never again would the people of berat venerate their past oppressor berat an ancient city which has seen rulers and regimes come and go has been the one constant from the illyrians romans and Byzant byzantines to the ottomans not Nazis and communists. Berat has been through a lot, and still the city of a thousand windows persists unbroken. Mm. Maya, why does the author use the word unbroken here at the end with that comma? That comma even makes it emphasized, right? Like unbroken. Um, why? Why is that? That's a very special used word there. Because of windows, and because uh, despite also this uh, country was facing a lot of you know narcissism, dictatorship, it's still I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> exists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're still there. Um, they're still yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> so they're Maya, unbroken. in English, have you ever heard that expression that the spirit remains unbroken? Spirit. The spirit. Yeah, the spirit, spirit remains unbroken. Yes. Um, yeah, and that's kind of what the author is playing with here, the unbroken spirit of the citizens of uh, Bharat. Mm -hmm. So even though they they've, uh, oh. e yeah, even though they've gone through so many hardships through the centuries and millennia, like the windows that decorate the city, the people's spirit of Barat cannot be broken. It's not broken. So that's why it's it's such a powerful, it kind of sh makes shivers go down my spine reading it. It's a beautifully written uh, piece at the end there. So um, mm -hmm. that's where it's coming from. It's nice that you picked that up. You, you got that. You're like, okay, yeah, yeah. There was a double, it's called a double meaning, right? There was a double meaning of that unbroken and um the comma here is very strategically used by the um by the writer to emphasize the word um, the city of a thousand windows persists unbroken so it's like a dun 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 it's like the the end of it that was really nice uh have you ever seen this city uh, have you ever seen the city of barad have you seen these giant letters on the side of the mountain I maybe I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't remember. <laughs> so, <laughs> when you are doing a reading, practice at home, everybody. Um, I definitely recommend uh, taking that extra step and enjoying your learning process, and taking a uh, peek at you know yeah. what are we looking at here? What are we looking at? Um, so here we have the uh, city of Barad, everybody. Um, it looks like uh, this. Um, and you can see that it is indeed kind of like on a on a mountain side here and yeah look at all those windows you see all those windows mm -hmm. that's a lot of windows
Yeah. <laughs> it is. It does look like a, a beautiful uh, city. So, um, yeah, checking that out. There's that river that the bridge goes over. That must be the Osum River there. And uh, probably there's a picture of the citadel somewhere as well. But it's uh, quite an incredible looking historical city. So take that extra step and really appreciate all the amazing beauty and history of human culture. Um, let's do this. Um, Maya, I'm going to keep you here with me for just a little bit more. Uh, can you read the first question here? Title of summary topic. Mm -hmm. The mythical origin of Berat in law was a battle between two concerning the affections of a certain woman named Tomer and Spirak. They live on today in the form of two surrounding the city of Berat. Can you fill those blanks for us? Into gods. Gods works. Gods, they'll take that. They are mentioned as gods. There's another word that they could take there. Another word. Yeah, giants. See, Anahita giants. says giants. Yeah. Uh, now, just a quick FYI, everybody. Gods, when it's plural, is always a small g, not a big g. Okay. The only time g appears as a big g is when we speak of the one god uh, in the christian and muslim uh, faith that's when it's a big g otherwise it's always small g like greek gods roman gods okay uh, giants okay um named tomor and sparag they live on today in the form of two what maya mountains yeah see you don't have to check that surrounding the city Right, two mountains. Mountains are in the city. Yeah, you got to make sure that it's plural, though, right? So these have to be plural, otherwise, because uh, of the word two. Uh, okay, Adrian. Uh, word form is incorrect. If the plural singular form is incorrect, it's a mistake, and you will lose that mark, unfortunately. Yes. <clears throat> so it has to be. Yeah. So okay. really, really pay attention to the word that's before. Like if you see the word to, then you should immediately think that's that that has to be plural. If you have an article like a or the, then you have to think, okay, this is probably singular or likely singular. Okay, it could with the it could be plural, but <clears throat> often it's not. Okay, uh, Maya, that was really good. Mm -hmm. Your reading is fantastic. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, thank you, Adam. Okay, bye, Maya. Have a good day. You too. Bye. bye. All right, that was Maya. Let's give Maya a thumbs up. Anna is just blasting ahead. She goes, Roman army. Wyatt says, no, no, that's Roman Empire. We'll figure that out soon. Uh, Said, you've been so patient. Said, are you ready? I am here, my good man. As long as you're still there, you've been hanging in there. You deserve every moment of my attention. Uh, we're going to go through this. Said, if you're there. Give me a sign. Uh, by the way, everybody who's just joining in and watching, uh, we're on our website here at uh, aehelp.com, okay? And to join the premium version of our website, uh, you can click on the red buttons on the website or you can do it through YouTube Shopify. Um, Carolyn, and I think we'll probably plop that link in there for you. Uh, Saeed. Saeed. Hey. Yep, there you are. Hi, Saeed Zlam. Hi, how are you? I'm good. You've been so patient. How do you do it? Uh, I'm just watching your stream and enjoying it. <laughs> Thanks, Saeed Islam. Thanks. Um, I appreciate that and I appreciate your patience. I really do. Um, all right, uh, let's do this. So uh, help me out with some of these questions. Now, uh, we just heard Maya. Maya answered the <coughs> first two questions. Students, Really important tip before we get into this. Um, okay, Said Islam. Uh, actually, you know what? I'll do it as a question. Um, Said Islam, when you're practicing these odds passages, do you try to answer the questions without looking at the passage or do you search the passage for every single answer? Uh, it depends, actually. If the question is pretty simple and if I have the answer on the top of my head, then I just try to predict and only after that I double check whether I'm correct or not. Okay, good, good, good. 
what would you say is the percentage? So each passage has about 12, 13, maybe 14 questions after, right? So it's 40 in total. So if we look at, let's say, the whole reading section from the 40 questions, how many would you say you kind of jump back to the passage right away and start searching or skimming, scanning? And how many would you say, on average, just kind of a, an approximate or a ballpark number, how many would you say you actually like, you're like, oh, I'm pretty sure that's the answer. I just put it in and keep going. What would you say is the ratio? Um, well, roughly speaking, I think 50-50. Uh, I mean, uh, 15, uh, what's the number of questions? Mm -hmm. 40. 40. 20. Yeah. Yeah, twenty twenty. Yeah. I okay. Think. Okay. That's a good. That's a fair. That's a fair uh, approach. Yeah. So that's pretty good. Okay. That's pretty good. Um, if you're doing a twenty twenty, so fifty fifty split, that's good. Um, I I say that you know if you're really going for that band nine, you should have confidence in about sixty percent of your answers. So roughly about twenty five. 26 of your answers, you should be quite confident that that is the correct answer without ever having to go back and check the passage. Like you should be like, like for example, these ones that Maya gave here with gods, giants, and mountains, that should be like, if you're going for a band eight or band nine, those should be there without you going back and reading the passage. So so that's pretty good though, Society Islam. So 50-50 is, is definitely solid, it's solid. Um, all right, let's uh, let's try and let's um, uh, do, uh, let's go with violence strikes. Whenever you're ready, go from there. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, how can I access the passage, the text? I can't see anything really. You can't see YouTube? Uh, I mean, I'm on YouTube, but I can see only the questions. Oh, oh no, no, yeah, we don't worry about the passage, just uh, just the questions. So let's just oh, read okay. from Violent Strikes. But yeah, okay. So go from Violent Strikes and we'll look at the passage if we need to, okay? And, and go ahead and read it loud so everybody can hear it. Oh, okay. So, Berat is thought to be about 2,000 and a half years old. Soon after this time, when it was a Macedonian fortress, the Roman army or the Roman Empire destroyed the city and killed all males over the age of 15. Later, Berat was given the name I don't know this okay, one. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, let's let's uh, yeah 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 no no, no. let's uh, let's uh, stop there for just two two seconds here okay, um, sure. <clears throat> so let's stop at twenty nine for a second. All right, so you said Roman Empire first, right? Mm -hmm. And then you said Roman Army. Okay, um, IELTS is a college level test. The difference is that college level tests don't just have correct answers; they have best answers. So let's use a little bit of logic, critical thinking. Who destroyed um, the Macedonian fortress? The Roman Empire or the Roman army? Which is a more accurate answer? Oh, the Roman army. It's right. Bad, I think. Well, it's more logical, right? So the Roman yeah. Empire was huge. And I bet you if we had a time machine and we went back in time, some people, as sad as this sounds, some of the people in the Roman Empire probably had no idea that it was destroyed. They didn't even hear about it or know about it. It was just happening over there, right? So it was just the army. It was more accurately the army, not the people who were living in, you know, other parts of Rome, right? So Roman army okay. is the better answer. Right. So when you have that kind of a situation where you've got these two answers, definitely stop and think for a second okay what's the better answer and we remember that roman army was in the passage and it's the better answer right so roman empire mm, they might give it to you or they might not roman army for sure they'll give it to you that's the better answer okay and then later barat was given the name um keep going so what's after the blank there uh, because of its importance in culture and beauty in the Byzantine Empire. Okay, so you don't remember the name, but you should remember what the name represents. So what is the name representing? Oh, the city of Thousand Windows, no. right? No, it isn't. It's the Byzantine Empire, it's the beauty. And again, reading the passage carefully, visualizing, even if you have to skim or scan everybody, and I'm obviously I'm not just talking to Said Islam here, I'm talking to everybody, and a lot of people make this mistake. Um, you can't just skim and scan randomly. You can't just generally skim and scan. You have to do it with purpose, okay? And when you're visualizing the text, and again, you don't have to understand all the words and all the information, but the main idea is it's very important. There was a person of beauty and a person of respect that was really clearly mentioned. There was a, almost a whole paragraph on this. 
Oh gosh, I missed lots of parts <gasps> of the passage. I fair enough, them. fair <laughs> enough, Sides Lum. It's the it's the, the Empress, the Empress or the sister of the Emperor, right? Oh. Do you remember her? Do you remember her? No? Did you forget What's about the first her? Letter? Do you remember the first letter of her name? And that's what I was going for. If you remember the first letter of her name, you can find the answer really quickly. Then it's going to just take you a few seconds to answer this question. If not, it could take you minutes to answer this question. So, guys, you said it was a second paragraph. Ugol Han says it was Thedorus. It was not Thedorus, and it was not the sister of the gods, Polly. It was... Uh, so, oh, I, I got it. It was Citadel, right? It was... No, Citadel is the, another no. word for castle. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. It was put something. Pupochi something. There it is. Remember Pulcheria? Oh, Pulcheria. Oh. Okay. So that was the name of the Empress, right? Pulcheria. Okay. And they named the city after her, right? Come on, we got to remember the beautiful princess or the beautiful empress in the story. You can't forget about her. You have to visualize her. <laughs> <laughs> so they um, they named the city Polcheriopolis. Mm -hmm. Do you know the English word metropolis? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Notice how here it's called Polcheriopolis. Yeah, that last part represents, like, resembles that metropolis. Yeah, and I don't speak Latin, but maybe somebody who's Spanish-speaking, like maybe Carolina might be able to help us out here. I have the feeling that opolis has something to do with, like, city of. It's kind yeah, of sounding too. like it probably means something like city of paltry. Right? Or like this, land. Yeah, yeah, or land of paltry, something like that. That would be my guess of what that means in yeah. Latin right so the yeah. correct name of the city here and this is where you'd have to check the text but you want to know you want to know where you're looking right Barat was given the name i'm just copy pasting <laughs> by the way computer-based exam you can copy paste okay so you don't make spelling mistakes so Polcheriopolis. Mm -hmm. got it yeah <laughs> all right side islam Searching with purpose. I'm not letting you go. Keep going. Guardian Barat or guarding Barat. Keep going. Sure. Uh, the fortress on top of Awesome River's north bank is known as the of Barat. It's over a thousand fifty uh, five hundred years old and was repaired approximately eight hundred years ago. It once held many religious institutions, including a and twenty Christian houses of worship. Mm -hmm. So. Um, the answer for 31 is going to be uh, Citadel, right? Yes. <laughs> you better get that one correct. I gave that answer to you just a minute ago. I said, no, that's the castle. And so known as the Citadel <laughs> of Barat. And of course, if you have to check the spelling, check it, right? To make sure you're not making a spelling mistake. Um, but uh, otherwise, you, you should know this one at this point for sure. Good. Okay, you're paying attention. Good, good. All right, keep going. Uh, it once held many religious institutions, including a uh, something in 20 Christian houses of worship. Sure. Uh, oh yeah a mosque and very good yes you portion. should not be searching for that so um again everybody if you're searching uh for every single answer you're not doing the exam you're not doing the reading section correctly you should not be searching if you if like there's a lot of people studies on that say oh there's not enough time 20 minutes is not enough well, if you're searching for every single answer, yeah, definitely 20 minutes is not enough. Then that's the problem. Um, mm. It's not the it's so people think it's because they're not reading fast enough. No, you're reading fast enough. You're not answering fast enough. That's the problem. And that's why if you have your situation side Islam, where it's like a 20, 20, 50 percent, that's good. You should be able to finish um, in these questions. God's giants, mountains mosque those ones for sure you should not be searching for if you're searching for those you have to improve your comprehension skills okay if you need to check Polcheriopolis, roman army citadel those ones yeah maybe okay but the other ones definitely not okay that mm -hmm. makes sense yeah. right yeah. inside islam when you're reading a story the beautiful empress the beautiful you know, heroin of the city. Well, you, 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 you gotta, you just got. Even if you don't remember her exact name, you have to. <laughs> you <gotta remember. laughs> All right. Um, thanks again for being so patient and yeah. for being a good sport with me, Sadi Islam. I hope you come back again.
Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye for now. Bye, Side Islam. Bye. All right. What a great sport. Let's give him a thumbs up. That was fantastic. All right. Let's take somebody else. Somesh. Yes, you can. Are you ready? Okay. Samesh, if you're there, give me a sign. Let me know. We'll look at these true, false, not given questions. Hello. Hi, Samesh. Hello. I can hear you loud and clear. Can you hear me? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, I'm, all, I'm audible perfectly. Okay. Yep. Got yep. It. So, Mesh, you get the easy yes, no, not given questions. How do you feel? I feel pretty much confident right now on these ones, I guess. Nice. I love it. I was actually being a bit cynical, which is not, not so cool of me, but um, a lot of people think these are really hard, but they're not that hard if you know what you're doing, right, Samesh? Exactly. Unless and until uh, you have got the correct, like, topic what it is all about and got the uh, uh, meaning of the particular topic mm -hmm. yeah 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 I mean they can still be challenging but as long as you use some good logic and you understand the main ideas of the passage these aren't all that bad absolutely there's a very uh, effective strategy um, for this have you seen any of the videos uh, from our YouTube channel or from the website on how to do these ones with the um, if this then that logic uh, yes I had referred previously a couple of days back uh, one of the uh, videos from your website I uh, like I was pretty much struggling in these kind of uh, things so I thought like it would be better for me to go and check out I found out some strategies and I'm trying to implement those ones right now good yeah perfect um, the first issue that a lot of a lot of people have is they try to figure out if it's yes no or not given and they try to figure out from all three of them at the same time and that's that's actually um, bad logic because what you want to do is first you want to figure out if the uh, statement is given or not given there's kind of like a hidden fourth um, there's a hidden fourth uh, piece here and the reason you don't see it is because it's these two together okay so yep. um, when the information is given then it's either contradicting so it's a no or it's agreeing it's a yes right so the first step is you actually have to figure out if it's given or not given if it's not given you just put ng and then you keep going you can't search or you can't skim read because you'll never find it right if it's not given <laughs> so it's a huge yeah. waste of time to try to figure out a not given uh, question right so you just have to figure that out so how do you figure that out well you have to figure out if it's important or if it's not important what is the subject what is the topic important or not important right yeah exactly so um, or if it's too much detail or if it's off topic, then it's probably not given. So let's do this with 33. Uh, read that one for me, please. Yeah, sure. The Ottomans had a significant influence on Islam during the early modern period. OK, in this statement, what's the subject? What, what is the topic of this statement? Uh, they're talking about the uh, rule of the ottoman empire yeah that the it ottomans had a significant, yeah. significant influence uh, yeah yeah let's slow down uh, keep it simple yeah. keep it simple keep it simple so there, this statement is talking about the ottomans and its influence on islam right yeah okay what is the passage about yeah it is uh, pretty much talking about the influence of the ottoman ottomans no 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 no, uh, no. keep it simple keep the it simple influence of the islam no it's not I disagree with you 100 percent uh, keep it simpler what is the passage about what's the topic of the passage topic of the passage is uh, like windows it's talking about the windows yeah it's the city of a thousand windows it's barat right it's the city yeah. of barat the city of a thousand windows aka the city of barat right that's what the passage is about it's not about the ottomans it's not about islam it mentions those words but it's not about that right it's about the history of Barat the city yeah. right and there's a lot of other influences there's Christian there's Roman there's communist there's a lot of other aspects going on there okay so 
This statement, 33, the Ottomans had a significant influence on Islam during the early modern period. Is that relevant to this passage? As far as I can refer to the passage number three, I think uh, it is relevant to that. No, it's not. I think it is relevant to passage four, I guess, then. No, because it's not relevant they had to any of it. Talk about Ottomans. Okay. The author doesn't talk about how the Ottomans influenced Islam. The author talks about how the Ottomans influenced Barat. The author talks about how Islam influenced Barat. But the author doesn't oh, talk about oh, how no, the Ottomans... Yeah. You see, you have to be really careful and very clever. Here it has nothing yeah. to do with English. It just has to do with the way you think about it, right? Now, yeah, now I got it. The influence of Islamic architecture as well. Yeah, that's Islam's influence on yeah. architecture. That's not the Ottoman's influence on Islam, right? The author yeah. doesn't talk about that. That's not the focus of his uh, passage here. The focus is here is to give you a history of, of uh, Barat, right? So this is an important tip for everybody. As soon as you see that the topic of the passage is missing from the statement, so there's nothing about Barat or the history of Barat, you should be very suspicious if it's mentioned. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Okay. See how yeah. 34, the next one, it starts with Barat. You see that? Yeah. Okay. You yeah. see how 35 starts with Barat? Yeah. You see how 36 starts with modern Albanian state, state. which is the country that has the city of Barat, right? Exactly. Okay. You see how 37, maybe that's getting off screen now. Yeah. Um, so if we keep going, you see how 37 also has uh, the word Barat. Okay. 39 has Barat. Okay. See how 38 doesn't? Right? Yeah. It does yeah. have Albanians who live in Barat, and it does have Enver Hoxha who was mentioned, but Barat's not there. So immediately that one's also suspicious for me. Okay. Okay. The ones that have Barat, it's much more likely that there's going to be some information because that's the topic of the passage, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So here in a perfect situation for this first one, you're just going to say it's not given and then go on. Uh, read number 34 for me, please. Barat's nickname derived from the Ottoman aesthetic that was favored during the early modern period. Important? Yes, it is important. Absolutely. This is where you're thinking what you were saying before is connected. Absolutely. So this one then yeah. must be given, right? Yeah. Is it true? Is the Ottoman aesthetic that favored this early during this early modern period? Um, does that where it got its name? The city of a thousand windows, according to the passage? Uh, yes. Yes. Absolutely. And confidence with these questions. You want to be confident and you're doing good here. So you put yes. And you move on, and you're correct so far. Okay, uh, 35. Yeah. Barat was ruled by Nazis and communists in the 20th century. Subjects in there, is it given? Yeah, subject is in there, and it was ruled by the Nazis and communists. In the 20th yeah. century? Uh, it is like, yeah, I think it is in 20th century. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Yeah, it's the 1900s, right? Yeah. 19... Yeah. 40s to 1980s right so absolutely so the answer is yes and see now yeah. you're on a roll now you're realizing okay the subjects there the topics there i read about that that seems right again it's the same as what i said to side islam you should not be checking for all of these if you're searching through the passage to answer each of these questions you're using the wrong strategy at least half of these yes no not given or true false not given you should be able to confidently answer without skimming and scanning and that's how you complete these reading passages within the 20 minute time limit does that make sense yes it does really make sense yeah okay and that and that way you're sure you know you're getting them right you're not just guessing them and you're not just skimming scanning and maybe getting them right you're just you're 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 sure Okay, uh, I'm going to stop there for a moment. Thank you so much for volunteering and helping uh, me. So, Mesh, do you have it, a question? Yes, I do have a question. Mm -hmm. Like, sometimes uh, when I go through, like, complete session on reading, mm -hmm. uh, there are near about three topics. 
and uh, I find it really difficult for me to concentrate uh, during while reading that topic. So I lose it like sometimes in between. Then I uh, mm -hmm. try to read it again, and this waits. Uh, Put think yourself my in it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Put yourself in it. Don't distance yourself from it. So one way to help yourself concentrate and remember and understand is put yourself in it. So if I'm thinking of Barat as some city in Albania that I'll never visit, that I'll never see, that I don't really care about, my brain will say, OK, no worries. I'll give it that much attention and it, it will not process the information. But if you trick your brain, if you go, hmm. I'd love to see that place one day. It sounds really interesting. Just imagine if I am a young man living in Barad in all of these historical periods with the Roman army invading and I'm hiding in one of these ancient houses um, trying to save my life and then suddenly it's the Nazis that are invading and now I'm hiding somewhere in the mountains looking at the city waiting for these people to leave so once you put yourself in that situation and you visualize it your brain will be much better at uh, at processing that information so really work hard to put yourself in the information okay uh, yes I can pretty much uh, relate to this as well because when I find the topic is interesting interesting to me yeah then I really uh, read the topic really fast and grasp what is there in that particular paragraph and when it is not of my interest then like I usually skim that target topic and go for the answers only and that I miss in that thing exactly and I can tell that your English is good enough that you should be getting at least a band six five seven on the reading no problem so put yourself trick your brain make it interesting okay yeah sure I'll focus on that yeah all right thanks Samesh I appreciate that was a good question thank you yeah have a nice day Jim thank Bye. you bye Samesh all right everybody that was Samesh and I'm going to leave the rest of this passage up to you everybody but again these strategies they're coming from the psychology of learning and education my major was psychology and of course that's what you're going to find in our courses so um, we were using the student partner speaking and you've got the computer-based practice test online course and you can access all of these when you sign up for the premium version uh, thank you so much uh, volunteers you were all awesome today um, I love your bravery. I really do. I, I, I know how challenging it is to volunteer and speak and present yourself in another language. And it, it takes a lot of confidence. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, it makes these classes so much better for everybody. Uh, click the big red button, everybody. You can get it through Shopify, through the channel. You'll see it right there, the products. You can just click on them, go through the payment process and then enjoy the uh, premium Zoom classes that are coming up now on the weekends, on Sundays and Wednesdays as well. Uh, students, I will show you the rest of the passage just real quick. So if you'd like to answer these uh, remaining questions in the yes, no, not given, you can check those out. Question number 40, the multiple choice there question. OK, uh, you can send your answers to my email. I will gladly give you the answer key and uh, you can check if you use these strategies correctly. Tomorrow, speaking part two, speaking part three um, for uh, our viewers. Uh, that one of those will be on the website, those live classes. The premium member or premium student Zoom classes or Zoom links are out. I sent them just uh, in the last hour, so you should see them. Carolina, thank you so much for all the help um, in the chat. Carolina has done a great job. She put that link for Shopify in the chat there for you at the end to make it easy for you. Much love to all of you wherever you are in the world and never let your spirit be broken. Always remain unbroken, just like the people of Barat. I'm Adrian. I look forward to seeing all of you tomorrow. Bye for now, everybody.